Marty Nellis is a transportation maintenance manager for the city of Chicago. He's also a dog lover. The area I work in, I see a lot of strays around there. Normally, I would go out and try to help a dog, but nine out of 10 times, I went out there to try to help a dog. Nine out of 10 times, it ran on me. And then one morning, Marty met a dog that would break the pattern. I was closing repair orders, and uh, I glanced out the window, and I seen this Doberman Pinscher walking down the center of the street. It was real cold and windy, and I said to myself, look at this poor dog, his feet are froze. So I went downstairs to see if I could get this dog to come towards me. Come on, baby, come on, come on, boy. And when he got close to me, what happened to you, huh? I could see he was all beat up looking. What happened? He had cuts all over. Uh, he was bleeding. He was in bad shape and needed help. I covered him up. But I figured now he's warm, he's covered with a blanket, and I let him rest. Oh okay. And I proceeded to call my night foreman, Bob Myers, which I know he has a lot of animals and he's a dog lover. Hey, Bob. Yeah, this is Marty. How you doing, Marty? Hey, good. Marty said he had found a dope out front. It looked pretty bad when I'd come over and take a look at it. A beat up look. He's sounding concerned. So I uh, went over there and I uh, went up in the office. And this dog's in bad shape, Marty. Look at it. Look at the cuts and stuff. I don't think it's going to make it. we got to get some help for this dog, because if we don't, I think this is going to die on us. They knew that if they took the dog to animal control, it would be put to sleep. I got some friends up in Grays Lake. They're Doberman people. Maybe they can give us a hand and make a suggestion what to do with them. Bob drove almost an hour north to Gray's Lake, hoping the injured dog would still be alive when he got there. I would check it every once in a while by maybe petting its ear to see if it get a little movement. And just about halfway up there, I stroked the dog a couple times and didn't see it respond. I said to myself, oh, I think this dog just died on me. And then all of a sudden, I seen an eye open up. So I, whew, he's alive, you know? Relieved, Bob drove the last few miles to Topps Boarding and Training Center, where his friend Jan met him at the door. Oh, Bob, he's in a lot worse shape than we yeah. thought. The dog was just in very, very poor shape. He seemed very, very depressed, very malnutritioned, and just really had no will to live at that point because of the shape that he was in. Let's take a look at him. As soon as the vet saw the dog, she just immediately wanted him rushed up to the hospital. I'm going to have to keep him for a few days. I didn't think the dog was going to make it, to tell you the truth. But after only three days in the hospital, the dog was back at Tops, where it was making a remarkable recovery. Bob and Marty split the $600 vet bill. It didn't matter to me of the price as long as the dog got it back up on its feet and had a home. We were thinking about adopting the dog, but, uh, you know, I've got three dogs at home, and Marty's got a dog that was sick, and it just didn't work at the time. I was getting kind of worried, and I was, you know, I'm picking myself up. Uh, nobody's going to want an old dog, you know? I think we were really getting to the point where we were almost ready to give up, because we had had him for several months. We are grasping for straws at that point, trying to find someone who would adopt him. We had a gentleman that had come into the kennel previously to adopt a Doberman, and I thought, well, possibly this gentleman would be interested in this dog. And then, by coincidence, he happened to walk into the kennel that same week. It was perfect timing, for not only was Rick Perry a dog lover... Hi, Jan. Hi, Rick. How are you? Good to see you. Years earlier, he'd adopted another Doberman from a shelter. I picked him up at a veterinarian clinic. The vet said, if you don't take him, we're going to euthanize him. I said, no, you're not. I said, I'll take him. And uh, I took him home. Rick named him Prince and quickly discovered that he was no ordinary dog. I have had a lot of Dobermans, but I've never seen a Doberman this affectionate with me and my wife. Hey, look at here. This is Prince. Oh, I can... He was what they call an alpha, which is like a pack leader. He was friendly, but he was just very dominant and very aggressive. Oh, over. Good boy! Rick began working with the dog, and within a few weeks, Prince proved what a great companion he would be. I'm part Native American. We believe we're related to all animals in the world. We believe that we're caretakers, and that they are our guidance, our spirit. 
they're our guardians. I saw a lot of that, amen. Very free, very wanting to go all the time. Be good, Prince. Be good. And then, about a year later, Rick and Marianne made arrangements for a friend to watch Prince for a few days. We were looking for a new apartment to move to. When Rick left Prince that day, he had no reason to think he'd never see him again. Okay, you My friend had him out one day for a walk on the north side of Chicago, and he got off leash. Prince! Prince ran. Prince! If you chase him, he just thinks you're chasing him to have fun. He runs faster, and he runs harder. Prince! And he got away. Prince! Prince! The friend was left with the most difficult phone call of his life. Hello? He said, Rick, he's gone. He got off the leash on me this morning. Uh, I've been all over the area. I'm trying to... I felt sick. It's not a pet. That's, that's my family. We took countless trips to the dog pounds and the animal shelters in Chicago. We made phone calls. I went through the neighborhoods. I went all over looking for him. We had no idea where he was. No idea. There were times I laid in bed at night and I would just ask my wife, I wonder where he is. I wonder how he's doing. Rick continued to search for Prince, believing that his animal companion was still waiting to be found. And my wife had to just tell me just just stop, stop doing this. Stop doing it to yourself. In the fall of 1998, the Perrys moved 60 miles from the Chicago area to Grays Lake, where Rick became a police officer. Honey. Hi. How was your day? Good. After we'd moved, we began looking for another dog. And as a police officer in the area, I knew about a canine training and rehabilitation center that I did off and on. So I went over there and talked to them, and they told me they had a very nice female that we ended up adopting, a red Doberman named Coco. When I got Coco, it filled a big void, but I still wanted Prince. I missed him still. Settled in their new home, Rick and Marianne began thinking about adopting another Doberman. And that's what brought Rick back to Tops that day. Hi, Jan. Hi, Rick. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. And I told them that I was looking to adopt another dog, and Jan said, we've been looking for you. You know, this is such a coincidence, Rick. I was trying to find your number. We have another dobe that we have in right now. Really? He's a little scarred up, but I thought of you. Where was he found? He was found in Chicago in pretty bad shape, but he's doing great now. A little really? scarred up. I, I lost my dog a couple years ago in Chicago. Oh, that's weird. I told him to describe the dog to me. Well, he's black. He's got a scar, I think, on his face and several on the back. And I took over the description in that sentence. Uh, does he have a scar, like, under his right eye? It's like a little swirl? You know, actually, he does. My hair just stood up, and I said, I think you've got my missing dog. I just thought, no, this is crazy. That's just too much of a coincidence. There's just no way possible. I left him in our office, and I went back to get the Doberman. And I was just started, oh no, this can't be right. It, no, no, it's not him. It's not him. I know it's not him. They brought him out. It was him. Unbelievable. It was so emotional, I just couldn't contain myself. And I just started crying. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. You remember me? You going The chances of me finding him again were astronomical. I never thought I'd see him again. And lo and behold, two years later, I come through the door of a place where I'm looking to adopt a pet, and they bring out my dog. Uh, I had tears in my eyes at that point. I had goosebumps, and it was just incredible. It definitely was a miracle. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, boy. And everyone involved agrees. I was just going to be excited that somebody adopted this dog when I found out the original owner I found the dog, I, I got goosebumps. We were probably 12 to 15 miles south of where he lost the dog, and where I took it to him was 45 miles north of where we were at, and it winds up that he moved up there three miles away from the kennel. 
chances of that are a million to one. I'll never let him out of my sight again like that. Mm -mm. He's one of the most loyal and obedient and passionate dogs I ever had.